Yeah, and it's uh, uh, it's it's good to look back at that in hindsight, isn't it? Like I, I sort of tell tell this story all the time, but like we with underwater filming, we when I was about 13, 14, we had a guy come in in a scuba suit. He'd sit on the bottom of the pool with his big camera in a waterproof case and he just kind of moved the camera along as we swam past and then we'd look oh, yeah. at it on this grainy tv and like it was about 30 seconds of, of feedback didn't really know what we were looking for or like we had no comparison video to any good swimmers and so like, i just didn't get any value from it but now we like i run a lot of clinics and we do that underwater filming and the gopro ipad and you are set that is all you need to yeah. be able to analyze your stroke well, like um, we run our own swim camps uh, up here, and we actually have a um, a swim pro um, uh, package that you know uh, swim pro from uh, from Australia. We actually we actually oh, yeah. bought from those guys, so we we bring it out to uh, to our swim camps every once in a while, and even uh, swim BC, you know, which um, you know BC being British Columbia, um, when they bring me out to their camps, if they if they can't get their video guy, they ask me to bring my video equipment uh, as well. It is so amazing um, the feedback that now that you can get. Um, with those or even just put them up on a projector so as the swimmers swim in on a 15 second delay or 30 second delay after they swim they can turn around and watch their technique right there and in, in almost real time like it's absolutely incredible yeah it's just it's so much easier to do these days and um and i like that setup with the delay because um i, w I went to a like an endless pool and what do they call it the um uh, anyway, they got the cameras set up there just down, you know, not too far from Melbourne at um, an endless pool there and they had a 30 second delay on. And so I was yep. looking at my stroke and then I was going, okay, I need to go a little bit deeper with this hand. I need to do this. And it took me a while to actually make the changes, but I had to make it feel really, really different than what I expected to make those changes. Like if you try and change a little bit, normally nothing happens. So having that, um, that almost instant visual feedback can, um, yeah. can really save you two years of, of, try, of trying to make those changes. It, it's totally crazy because what you think you might change in your head, um, if it feels good or it feels normal, then chances are you actually didn't change anything. So one of the things I, do, um, I ask my swimmers that I'm working with is, um, do you feel weird? And if they say no, I'm like, well, then you didn't change anything. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, may, I do things that will make them feel totally weird because, like, you know, when you make those changes, because swimming is one of those sports where you don't have the you, – you're not looking at your own body. You can't see what you're doing, right? So you have to rely on, on, on how it feels, right, uh, like, and for proprioception. So finally, when they feel weird, then it's like, okay, well, now you changed something. Right. And that, like, it's so crazy how small of a, of a change they've actually made. And it feels like they, they just like change, like their complete, complete stroke, even if they just, you know, enter the water, you know, more in front of their shoulder as opposed to outside their shoulder, you know, uh, someone's oh, absolutely. so. Say that all the time in, uh, in clinics and, um, and sometimes it really takes a bit of pushing or encouragement to get them to be willing to, to do that as well. It's kind of like they they're, they're stuck within what they're comfortable doing. So to, to be able to get them to be comfortable trying to make those changes and say, it's okay to feel weird. You're probably going to feel a little bit awkward. It's like, you've really just got to go, okay, let's, or what I say to them sometimes is let's, um, let's just over-exaggerate this thing that we're working on. And if we need to bring it back a bit closer to where it was, we can, but to start with, let's over-exaggerate it and just see where it ends up and just kind of giving them permission to, to do that they sometimes then can um, you know, be okay with uh, having it feel a little weird. Yeah, and I actually think that the best swimmers are the ones that are always open to change. You know, even if you're a world champion or Olympic champion, you're not sitting there thinking that, okay, well, this technique won today. It's definitely going to win again in four years from now or two years from now. Like what won, what won today might not, might not win in four years. When I won the world championships, it was like a 48.45 or something like that. I went a, in a bodysuit, right? 48.4 in a bodysuit. I went a 47.8 uh, in a jammer and I still <laughs> only got third, right? <laughs> so obviously I wasn't, even though I'd won at the 2007 world championships, I didn't think that was going to be enough um, to win later on down the road. Um, Again, failed at Beijing, so not, uh, for a completely different reason. But uh, but every other time, yeah, definitely was like, no, it's not going to carry me through. It's only good enough for today, and I got to look and figure out what I can do that's going to make me better tomorrow.